What's wrong everyone? Jeremy here from RC Nightmare and I've been doing a lot of work on my cars over the past week. Memorial Day weekend, working. You probably can't tell but basically every one of these cars needed to be bound to a controller. It was a massive project that I just did not feel like doing and it was a project that I kept putting off because quite frankly it sucks. It's the least fun part of RC is just maintenance. And part of the maintenance involved me going through my old batteries. And much to my chagrin, I had two, not one, but two brand new 4S 5000 milliamp batteries that I had just opened for the first time ever, put them on my smart charger, and they were DOA, completely dead. Now the guy at the hobby store said, Meh, that happens if they sit for a while. Yeah, that's kind of true, except every other battery you see sitting here, the Traxxas and the Spectrums and everything, had also sat for the same amount of time and they did not show up DOA. So I'm out of 160 bucks. So first tip of the video is, when you buy a new battery, make sure you go out of your way to test that battery and make sure that it works. Because if you wait long like I did, you don't really have a gripe to bring up with your local hobby store especially when you actually care about them and you want them to succeed. You don't really want to screw them over. So what I ended up doing was buying two brand new 100C 4S batteries so I could run my Creighton 8S. Um, and hopefully, shout out to Hiawatha Hobbies because they always take care of me. They'll do something. All I want is Horizon to like replace them. But what I started thinking about was boy, I have a lot of potential fire hazards just laying around in my shed. And I prefer if my shed didn't burn down. Now, the interesting thing is there are a lot of, con there's a lot of conventional wisdom around lithium polymer storage. Lithium polymer is the kind of the, it's kind of the apex of battery technology, at least in terms of modern remote control cars. And it's kind of been that way for 10 years when I got out of the hobby, five, 10 years ago, LiPo was new. When I got back into the hobby, LiPo was still new, although basically everything had different connectors back then, everything was Dean's connectors. Now Traxxas has their own connectors, Spectrum has their own connectors, all this kind of stuff. But um, regardless of that fact, there are many horror stories about these batteries literally bursting into flames. Every single year, someone's house burns down because of a lithium polymer battery. Whether it's an RC battery or it's a battery for like a smart bike or whatever. I mean, heck, I have a dog toy, a Wizbo. It's like, you know, the dogs chase it around that runs on a 2S LiPo. And every one of these people are always saying, put in a LiPo bag, buy a LiPo bag. I'm here to tell you right now, LiPo bags are worthless. They're fine if it's like a little 1S, 2S, soft pack, um, plain battery pack. But when we're talking about some of these capacities, you know, a thousand, 5,000 milliamp, I'm sorry, 7,000 milliamp in these tracks of soft packs, you think about, hey, maybe it'd be cool if I didn't burn down my house. The conventional wisdom has always been to put them in LiPo bags but there have been innumerable lipo bag tests on YouTube and everywhere else that essentially prove that it might save you if literally nothing else is around and you it's better than nothing. It is not a viable battery pack storage facility. Now, what I generally do is I have a block of concrete outside and I will lay my batteries out on top of it and then I will cover them with a piece of plastic. Obviously that plastic will burn should the worst happen, but it'll keep the water and everything else off them. Nowadays, the question is becomes, there's three schools of thought. The first is lipo bags. Don't use them, they're a joke. Stop buying them, they're not gonna save you. Again, unless it's like a tiny 2S soft pack air, you know, airplane, battery, then sure, fine. It might be okay. Then well, people will often talk about ammo boxes. I'm here to tell you that you can use an ammo box if you want, but I just went to my favorite hobby store over the past weekend and I don't want to you know, put anyone on blast, 
But when he recommended an ammo box, I said, well, did you take the seal off or not? Inside the ammo box is a seal. And he said, no, don't take the ammo, don't take the seal off because you want to deprive the fire of oxygen, which makes sense if it's not a chemical fire, which is exactly what lithium polymer is. These are not, this is not a, you know, sticks and stones caveman fire. These are chemical cells discharging and they discharge a gas and you need to vent that gas. And so I said, hey, you should take that seal off. Otherwise it turns into essentially a pressure cooker explosive device. You don't want that. And he said, no, 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 you wanna seal it to keep the, I'm right, he's wrong. You don't want that seal on. Because if you've ever poked a hole in a lipo or you've seen a lipo explode, you know that it's a massive gas off, you know, offshoot. There's a big gas you know, off gas. And if you're gonna use an ammo box, my advice, I'm not a doctor, is to use an ammo box, but to take a file and poke some holes in the top for some ventilation to let that gas out. You don't want an ammo box that essentially turns into a pressure cooker uh, that could blow at any time. Yes, bag, terrible. Ammo box, better. But take that seal off and poke some holes in the top. Because, again, you don't want things, you know, becoming, you know, oh, look, it contained the fire and then it blew off your arm, right? Now there are also options out there. Again, I'm 100% not sponsored. I did all of my research on my own and I found these things, which are called, I'll leave a link in the description. They're called bat safes. But essentially it's an ammo box with, what did I say? Ventilation. So you open these things up. This thing alone was about 50 bucks. And you have a small area in here where you could maybe put two or three batteries, right? The idea is that there's a spot here where you can run your charging cable, you can charge your batteries in here. What I have found is that the bat safe is probably the best option. Now here's some, here some issues, okay? So I have the bat safe, okay? Which is essentially an ammo box with insulation that also has ventilation on top. You start putting 60, <laughs> you get one of these big batteries, you could put one here, one here, and then maybe you could sneak a two cell in down here. That's it. The more batteries you cram in here, let's say I went crazy and I was like, well, I could technically close it if I put this in here, this in here, and this in here. Well, anybody that's bought LiPo batteries knows that I just stuffed about 500 bucks in a $50 safe. So you, and they even sell, again, BatSafe sells these like tall containers that you could probably put 20 batteries in. And sure, it might contain the fire, but you're gonna burn $1,000 in batteries along the way. So what I recommend to people is if you're worried about it, you can see here I bought six of these. Well, you really can't see it, but I bought six of them. And they're about 50 bucks each. And I, cons I considered, obviously, you know, 10 years ago when I was in the hobby, uh, paying 30 bucks for a battery was a lot. But these 100C 4S batteries were over 100 bucks or close to 100 bucks. So you put two of these in there and that's it. If there is a fire, you don't want, <laughs> you know, yes, your house doesn't burn down. That's number one. Number one is your house not burning down, which the bat safe will, and I've seen fire tests of it, it will do that. It will protect your house from burning down. But also I thought, well, boy, it sure would be nice if I didn't also completely burn, you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars worth of lipos also, because if one starts on fire, they're all gonna start on fire. So I bought a bunch of this size, the medium size. I think they were 50 bucks each, 50 or 60 bucks. I'll leave a link. Again, not sponsored. If somebody else makes the same design, if it's a fireproof box with ventilation, it's fine. Um, the ammo box, I would probably add some ventilation to. Um, 
this idea that, you know, right here, if you've ever seen a lipo, you know, discharge rapidly, um, it's pretty scary. Like there's a lot of gas emitted, there's fire, there's flames. It's a pretty intense interaction. It's a pretty intense action altogether. So I found the bat safe to be how I'm going to store these batteries. Now, here's another problem. I can only put two, if I, if I give a crap about not having all of my batteries burn, if there's a battery fire, now I have to buy all these. And you can't stack them on top of each other. And you don't want to put them on a plastic shelf. So really, the question is, do you put all your batteries in a plastic tub 10 feet from a building that you give a crap about? <laughs> you know, the, the, the conventional wisdom says, Look, you can put this back, you can take all your RC batteries and throw them in a plastic tub and throw them 10 feet from your house. And if there's a fire, sure, you'll use your batteries, but you won't burn down your house. That's probably like step one. If you're totally crazy and you have a bunch of 4S, 5S batteries that cost 100 bucks each, you probably, are, it's probably smart to pick up one of these for like, you know, every $300 in batteries. Um, but if you have a bunch of small or cheap lipos, you know, you could, you could probably get the big one and just throw them all in there and be like, well, if in the event that I'm extremely unlucky, if I get struck by lightning of unluck and there's a, a lipo fire, you know, at least it doesn't burn down my house. So I bought six of these to store, basically each one of these will store three of my large capacity, high voltage batteries. And then I bought one tall one that I'll basically toss on my 2S um, and soft packs into. And I think that that's, this is a luxury most RC people don't have. Um, but I've watched hundreds of videos. The lipo bags are not, don't buy one of those. Um, I would rather see you bury your lipos out in a hole <laughs> somewhere than buy those. The ammo boxes are fine, but remove the seal and put some vent holes. Um, these new fireproof safes with ventilation, I don't know if Batsafe is, you know, the guy that has this. It's not my, you know, it's not my expertise. It's the one I landed on, but again, they didn't pay me any money. I just did my own research. I tried to do everything on this channel with my own dime. Um, based on everything I found, that's the best way to kind of keep everything uh, safe. People forget, like if you don't have money, extra money, I know a lot of people in RC, um, you know, we'd rather spend money on upgrades or a bigger engine or bigger ESC or whatever than battery storage safety. Uh, if that's the case, then just remember to leave your lipos outside, you know, throw them in a plastic tub to keep the water off them and keep them five feet from your house. Uh, but if you don't have the room or you have the budget to, you know, store your lipos properly, then I highly recommend a fireproof box that has ventilation. You know, an ammo box without the seal with holes poked in it, I think is good. The bat safe is a more elegant solution, but again, it's more expensive. So this is what I found. And I've been in RC for 10, 15 years now. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. There's nothing to these bat safe boxes. I mean, it's just a fireproof box with a ventilation, with a bunch of vents on top, because that's what happens when lipos erupt. They don't start on fire like, like a normal fireplace would or a piece of wood. It's a chemical reaction. So you need to have the venting out. Um, otherwise it just becomes this pressure box that you, know, you don't really wanna touch. Uh, let me know what your LiPo solutions are. This is what I found. Either keep them away from your house and out of water or spend the money on a bat safe or something similar um, and you know, have some peace of mind that's not going to burn down your house or your apartment or whatever, uh, or your shed when you're not paying attention. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name's Jeremy. This is RC Nightmare, and we'll talk to you again real soon.